Welcome to the Classy Career Girl podcast. I'm your host, Anna Runyon, founder and CEO of Classy Career Girl, one of Forbes' most influential career sites. This is a podcast for a community of women who want to turn their passions into work they love. You'll learn how to become happy, successful, and balanced with class, skill, and style. We believe that you can create your future. So stop delaying your great life. Go put yourself out there. You can have your great life and career right now. Hello, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Good. You've been following along. I saw you left a yep. comment here. Rights and plan now. What is that yep. you in your planner? <laughs> uh, the July 1st, of course, for plan. July because 1st. that's, I mean, if it's the same thing as what I did in September in, in San Diego, of course I have to attend a virtual version of it. Yeah, so we're going to do... Even if it's different, vir- actually, I'd want to go to it. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, you were lucky to come to our in-person one. Doesn't it seem like forever ago when we could have in-person <laughs> events? Meredith? It does. Like, wait, when was that? Like, what? I know. We could hug and see each other in person. Um, so yeah, we're going to do, cause we can't do it in person. We're going to do it virtually. We're going to invite all of everyone who is in class and everyone who joins us before tomorrow. Um, speaking of which I'm going to, uh, see the link. If, um, I think someone on our team might be listening. They can add the link in the comments because I forgot to say the link before. So thank you for reminding me. Um, it's classycareergirl.com forward slash join class. That's the link if you want to join the class membership and get to go to our um, planning event where you get to plan out plan out your goals. And so, uh, so I, know I asked you, like, what was um, what was the like result of that plan live event? Like, did you come away? Did you use your planner? <laughs> Should I even ask that? Um, like, how did your goals go that you set that day? Um, I think I think it gave me it's not so much about a specific goal as it is that that peace of mind that me being a multi-passionate entrepreneur is not a bad thing. Um, I, I kind of got it in my head that, you know, I had to pick one thing that I wanted to do and that was it. I couldn't do anything else. And that meant that if I liked something else that I had to just set it aside, I couldn't, I couldn't make it a business. It would have to either be a hobby or just something else. And instead it was like, no, actually you can kind of merge all of these things together. You can do something creative and you can affirm that this is the kind of person you are and that there are plenty of other people out there like you seeking a person just like you and they're your target audience or in this case, my target audience. So I, I think that's, that's kind of what I walked away from it with was just sort of this confidence that, yeah, I, I can actually do this. I don't, need to be a guru or something I can get started and yeah you can yeah that was really powerful and strengths that you have you have so many of watching you over this last year there's so many gifts and strengths that you have and like combining it and putting it into that thank you that career or not even like closing one door you know like you can do a lot of things together um so you haven't I, I haven't asked you let's let's start at the very beginning like what who tell us a little bit more about who you are in your background um, so we can get to know you. Okay, so um, hi everyone. My name is Meredith Sweet Silverstein. Um, I have two businesses basically. One of them's been around for a little bit longer than the other one. Um, I got a library science degree in 2017. And uh, so I'm cut out and certified to be a librarian. But of course, libraries aren't open right now. And I also, before getting that degree, worked retail, basically from high school on through undergrad, was some form of retail or another. And it really burnt me out. Like it really burnt me out. I could be working for fantastic companies. I could be working for companies, big, small, Fortune 500, indie bookstores, all of them, but it burned me out. And when I got to the point of like, okay, I I love books, I love technology, what's a way that I can merge them? library science was the answer. But even so, while I was still in the library program, I had people that were like, I still want to do web design. I still want to, you know, have you tutor me. I still want to know, how do you do this for your email marketing? How do you do that for your social media? And it was like, I can answer those things. And I love helping people. That That's usually pretty abundant from someone who who tends to be either in 
a profession like retail over and over again, where it's like all customer service or where you look at something that's public service like librarianship, of course you want to help people. Um, I think a lot of us have that urge to just help people in some yes. form or fashion. And so that's what I started my business off of was that here I am, I'm a librarian, so I'm really good at research. I'm good at reading. I'm good at finding the best resources for any given problem. But I also like being creative. You know, I, I like writing. I like designing things. I like doing all of this stuff that if you were to ask, you know, five other librarians, some of them might be like, yeah, sure, I'm kind of into that stuff. And some of them <laughs> might be like, what? No, please. Uh uh. You know, um, I think everyone has their strengths that they really love and they want to do on a daily basis. And that's true of absolutely every career, every person who's in the career that they know is their fit. You know, if you have that confidence that you are in that role and you're doing the thing that you love every day, then it really doesn't matter that someone else with a similar job title has completely different interests or different ideas of what it means to be a whatever. Um, and so being able to be comfortable starting a business and still call myself a librarian, because I was really worried about that. I was like, I can't call myself a librarian. I'm not working at a library all the time. And it was like, well, but you work there sometimes and your job title is librarian and, you know, you have the degree. <laughs> so it, it was really just about being okay with that. And, uh, now my business is about information project management, which I think allows me to cover a wide range of different things that I really enjoy doing without limiting myself to just one tiny little job title or people's expectations of that job. And the other that. business love... is tarot. It has nothing to do <laughs> yeah. with anything. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Here's all the, all the things coming into play. And I love how you've discovered what you enjoy and you're kind of not willing to give up the thing to do the things you don't really want to do in your business too you're like hyper focused on doing what what you enjoy yeah and there's a lot of it I mean this is the thing I am fully willing to acknowledge that there are things out there that I don't know but I need to know what I don't know in order to decide do I like it or not and I think that's it's you need to be able to figure out by doing whether you like something or not. Um, <laughs> a lot of times I think I have this kind of like initial fear of something, trying something new. Um, and then it's kind of like, I realized this is why people eat spicy food. This is like a, a revelation that I had not that long ago. It's, it's the same kind of thing. You start something new, you try a spicy food, you go on a roller coaster. It's like you're chasing this sense of excitement. And you have the option of doing that on a daily basis. So why wouldn't you keep learning, keep trying something slightly new? So, you know, I'm eating a little bit of hot sauce every day. I'm not, I am not that person. <laughs> no, in my career and business, I am. I, I, I see what you're saying though, because it yeah, is that's every, what I mean. day, every day is like a different challenge and doing something new and figuring it out <laughs> as you go. Yeah. So what are some of those, like speaking of problems and challenges, like when you, you decide, you know, to, to do this, uh, what are some of the problems and challenges that you were looking to solve? I mean, I had all of these questions. Like I said, I didn't know what I didn't know. You know, I didn't know, was I disciplined enough to be my own boss? Was I mm -hmm. capable of getting all the nitty gritty of business figured out. And that includes things like bookkeeping and licenses and taxes and all of these different things. And I was like, well, okay, I shouldn't be afraid of like this supposed mountain of research I have to do because I'm a librarian. I love research. Yeah. So I saw that as like, okay, here's a challenge I'm going to tackle. The interesting part came from what are the questions that I don't immediately know the answer to? You know, what are, what are the things that I need someone else to kind of inspire me to think about? And I think that's a lot of the time where class or CRP is what I'm in, uh, helped me because it's sort of like asking the questions you didn't know you needed to have an answer to, or mm -hmm. asking you to find the answer to those questions because you didn't even think that those questions were a thing. So 
being able to look at those questions and be like, okay, you're not an impossible question. I am going to find an answer to you. And being confident about that, as opposed to being like, I'm never going to find out the answer. Where? You know, that would be yeah. really challenging. Like drowning in that. I have no idea how to, how to do it. Or, or Nella was saying like, she didn't know it's, what step to take, you know? Yeah. Overwhelm. You easily get overwhelmed when you have essentially a mountain of unknowns in front of you. Um, but for me, it's less about being afraid of them than it is about tackling them. Um, it's, 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 it's like the idea of like, you're faced with this dark black cave, right? Do you go in, even though you don't know whether there's a treasure in there or a dragon that's going to eat you? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm there with my headlamp on and I'm like, all right, let's go find the treasure or the dragon. I like them both. You know, exactly. So you're, you're willing to take analogies. the challenge. I know. Yeah. You're willing to take the cha- challenge, whatever, whatever it is, you're going to, you're going to find it out. So, uh, so how did you learn about class? Girl? I've been listening to the podcast for years. <laughs> Thank um, you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think it was honestly, I have no idea how I st- stumbled on the podcast I think I became like a podcast junkie one day like five years ago six years ago some some distant point in the past and I just started like oh cool I like learning about this thing and I like learning about that thing oh that looks good let me subscribe to that and that's that's how I stayed on top of it because every other feed that's out there gets so cluttered you know you could subscribe to a page or someone's account somewhere and there's no guarantee that you'll actually see their content on a regular mm-hmm. basis. You have to like do something special. Like you might need to pin them or yeah. star them. And if, if you do that with everybody, then it kind of defeats the point. But podcasts, on the other hand, it pops up when there's a new episode uploaded. And I'm like, ah, oh, great. I got 40 minutes. I'm, I'm going to listen to that right now. Love you it. Know? And actually that, that happened to me earlier today. And I was like, oh, I want to listen to this new episode of Anna's. And then I was just like, I don't have 40 minutes. I'll listen to it later. <laughs> So well, that's, that's on my planner is listen to this later today when you're doing another thing. Awesome. Thank you. So that's the classy career girl podcast. If you guys aren't yeah. subscribed yet, go, uh, do you listen on iTunes? Yeah. Listen on iTunes and subscribe. Um, awesome. Well, I'm glad that that works. Um, so what did you think when you first joined, uh, the, cl- the membership? Like, what did you think when you, when you started to learn about the success path? It felt great having guidance. Like I said, one of my challenges is knowing whether or not I'm disciplined enough to do something. And for me, where I ended up thriving a lot in, for example, the longest retail job that I had was it had a structure. You know, they had essentially a path of like, we had two weeks of training for that job, two weeks. And this was one week completely removed from the store, one week in the store being supervised constantly. Um, it's a certain fruit company for those of you who would like to know what is she talking about? (laughs) I shall not name names. Um, but, uh, it was one of those things where I, I really thrived in having that structure because it gave me the confidence of knowing, okay, here are little baby steps that I can take. And here's a goal that I have to reach. And then you can confidently check that box off when you've reached that goal. And that's what I really loved about seeing that CRP had because it's not for me it's not like um you know you have a race to a specific finish line and you're you're having to beat everyone else there everyone's got their own path my favorite game as a kid was the game of life right and you have two paths right you could start out and one person you can just go straight to getting a job or you can go to college different paths you wind all around you go to different places you know and there's like four or five different places you could end up and and that's life in a manner of yeah. speaking. And I just really like that idea that, you know, everyone can be at a different point, but you can all still have a great conversation. You can bring up points that other people wouldn't necessarily think to. You can offer insights from a completely different industry, you know, and and the structure of CRP is such that you can have many different people doing all different things but we can all still talk business without it being like, huh, what's she talking yeah. about? You know, so it's, it's, it's a common language. That's what I really like about it. 
And I love the feedback that you're always giving too, because you're always on our weekly coaching calls on Tuesdays. You're always there in the comments um, and you're always giving feedback too. I think that's one of the best things about the community too, is like you can get feedback from so many different other industries and people who've had experience doing things that you have quite, who have those questions, like, like you were saying, you have questions. There's people who know the answers, you know, you just need to ask and get, get support and put yourself out there and ask for help. Because people have those answers yeah. and, and know what you need to do next. So did you have any doubts? Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was, again, it was like, is this going to be a thing that I can stick to and do? Um, mm-hmm. I, as, as I've said, I'm a multi-passionate person and I've, I love learning. I mean, as evidenced by the fact that I, you know, got a librarianship degree. Um, it takes a lot of dedication, by the way, because it's, it's so much paperwork (laughs) yeah but um it's it's the thing is is that I was looking at it as you know uh, again at first it felt like okay am I going to be able to finish this but then I realized it's not about getting to phase five by a certain point in time it's about really absorbing the content and living it in a way and then Mm -hmm. yeah applying it um because when you can do that then you can just kind of you know, walk to the next step being like, yeah, I got this. Yeah. So what was, what was, so is that your first step? Like phase, phase one, like what was your first step when you joined? Well, obviously I started with phase zero. Got to start at the very beginning, (laughs) even the the pre beginning. Um, (laughs) and, um, I just, I just liked the format of essentially like, we're going to set you up for success first. And you're going to have this like foundation to work from, um, One of the things that I think was from one of the early phases was the idea of writing, you know, three successful wins or three things that you managed to get done that day and three things that you're grateful for or happy about. I've incorporated that into my daily journaling practice. Every single day I do this and I have a little habit tracker that tells me like, okay, did you log your food for the day? And did you log these things? And I consider it a complete journal entry if I've done all of those things. And it just feels really good to have that out at the end of the day and just be like, yeah, I did these things. And I think, I think this is a struggle that I think several people can relate to, but I, I I, like other folks in our group and elsewhere. uh, I struggled with depression for a long time and being able to incorporate a simple little practice into my day meant that I was really being reflective. I wasn't putting pressure on myself to do things that other people did. And I could find happiness and and success in the little things. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't had a depressive episode in a really long time now. And that feels really good to say, you know, and and just being able to feel like I can actually get things done. You know, because that would often be like a trigger for me would be like, I'm never going to be able to get all this done, you know, Mm. but being able to essentially take a big goal, break it down into smaller steps and then realize, hey, wait, this is just something I can break down over the course of a week. You know, here's here's what I'm going to do to make progress toward that goal today, you know, Mm. and that that feels amazing, you know, because there's nothing I think more exciting than really being done and then putting your thing out there into the world, whatever it is, you could have spent, you know, a month, three months, a year on it, or you could have spent a week working on something small, like a, you know, like a campaign or something online. So it just feels, it feels really good to do that. Yeah. So, so much, so many times we think of like these big goals and it's like, how are we ever going to meet that? So I love that you're just like talking about just breaking it down. It's like one step, two step, (laughs) you know, like just those like baby steps is just that one yep. step forward. We don't have to, and we don't even have to know how we're going to get to the big goal either. I was just thinking that yep. the other day too, is like, I have goals for the end of the year, but I have no idea how that's going to happen, you know? And so we don't have to know, Yeah. right? Just follow, yeah. follow the path. So yeah. what do you think would have happened if you would not have joined and if you would still have been going along that path? Um, probably meandering a lot taking a lot of detours, probably, you know, never really feeling settled either. I think because I think there's some sort of like 
break that you give yourself when you start realizing you're you're on a specific path, you have a, a destination that you're going for, and you have you know already answered questions, for example. It's just confidence, you know, you can strut your stuff, so to speak. And you don't have that, then you're just sort of like, can can I lay down and rest now? Can I have a nice night's sleep? You know? Can I not look at my bank account and not have a panic attack? <laughs> you know, it's, you have a lot more confidence, I think, just on the day-to-day -day basis, being able to be like, yeah, I, I know what I'm going to do today. You know, I know what I'm going to do today for me. I know what I'm going to do today for my business. I know what I'm going to do today for my business, for others. And that's, that's just like a really good feeling, you know, knowing that you can make progress and my, uh, my goal was like, I don't want to, I don't want to put a dent in the universe. I want to punch a hole in the multiverse because I'm a comic ah. geek. So it's like you when thinking about making a difference in the world. Yeah, dents are fine. But you know what? I'm going to punch a hole in the multiverse. I'm going to make a difference in a big way with a lot of little steps that nobody sees coming. And that's hey, just if anyone be... can do it, you right. can do it. I, I think you, I think you're on to something here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Love it. So what changes has, you know, what changes in your life has, have you made? You've shared some, which is great. Um, but like, tell us about some of the results. I, I have some, cause I was looking up all of your CRP wins right before this. Uh, but like what's, what's happened now since you joined? So one of the big things that I struggled with when I was in retail was time management. Mm -hmm. um, it frequently got brought up as this thing uh, that's like my weakness. And, you know, it was just like, you got to work on it. You got to work on it. And, you know, there was mm -hmm. a certain point where it kept on coming up as a struggle. And I was basically at the point where I was like, well, you know what? I guess this is just like a thing about me. You know, it's like freckles. I'm stuck with them. I guess I'm also stuck with poor time management skills. You know, it felt like everyone was telling me to fix it, but no one was giving me the tools to do so. And so I was just kind of convinced that that's, I was stuck like that. And instead, I've got this, this lesson in CRP that made me kind of like rethink like, okay, here are the tools that you can really use to break down your time management into something a little bit more reasonable. And I was... I had never before encountered this idea of, of taking your time and like breaking it up into these three areas of like focus and flex and your sacred or free time. And this was kind of a game changer for me because I am one of those people who loves lists. And so I took my calendars and I had, yes, I have more than one because, you know, I have like, for example, a calendar for um, due dates. And then I have a different calendar for, Facebook events or something, you know, or appointments or whatever. Um, and so I sorted all of my calendars into these three groups. And I actually managed to get an app that looks at my calendar, but then also kind of just hovers in the background of my computer and is like, okay, you spent X amount of time in your browser. You spent X amount of time in your email. And it, it's like, okay, here's what you did in those apps. You know, are you going to call that productive time? Or are you going to call that sacred free time? Are you going to call that flex time? Like you were just checking your emails or something. And it, it's just wide open my eyes of how much time I was spending doing every single thing. So now instead of feeling like time management is this perpetual weakness of mine. And it's like, you know, if I were going on a job interview, I'd have to be like, Oh yeah, this is my weakness. But you know, now I can say with confidence, this is a thing that I overcame. Yeah. This is a thing that I have essentially made into my own tool because before it was this this just sort of like this big monster lingering in the background and it was just going to be like this problem for me all the time and instead I've made it work with me I've made it work for me and now I'm using those tools to help others which is great and I shared my breakdown of my different calendars in the group and yeah. someone was like you should teach this and I was like wait what I just, I just like learned this myself. I don't know what you're talking about, but it was like, I got giggly over that. I was so happy that someone was just like, wow. Well, that's always the because best way to learn is by teaching. So, and, and I just, I just think it's, it's also really motivating to know that it wasn't just me. I know that a lot of people 
at some point will look at someone else and you either do one of two things. You're like, I, I, I got it. I got it good. I'm not, I'm not as struggling the way this person is. And then you look at someone else and you're like, oh man, they've got everything that I want. I suck, you know, but then there's a whole bunch of other people that we forget. And those are the people that are in the same boat as us. And there are plenty of other people like me who are struggling with time management and maybe they struggle with it in a different way, but they would still find value in the the tools that I I've used or the method that I used. And I just think that's really powerful that someone can essentially make a small change, but it makes a big difference to someone else. Just like the, the three things that you taught me how to do. Yeah. blew my mind and now someone else is like yeah you can teach and all of a sudden it's like a boost to my confidence like wait I I could teach something you'd want to learn from me yeah because you, you know, put your it, unique spin on it too and I think that goes back to a question I don't know if you heard that someone asked Joni about do you ever feel like you know uh insecurity or looking at, at the success of other people and like you may have learned something from me, but you took it and you put your own spin on it and you can still learn and, yeah. and teach other people with it too. So I love, I yeah. love that. And I love too, that you're bringing up time management. Cause that's like one of the first things that I always tackle in the membership, no matter where you come in, cause there's an assessment that you'll take in the beginning and it will guide you to the best place to start, whether it's our job searching success path or the business growth success path. And so no matter what though, you're starting with time management because that's one of the biggest like um, things that's going to hold you back from your dream career or your dream business is not being able to have time management and thinking like Meredith, I'm terrible at time management, but you're, it's that thought process of, of thinking that that's holding you back. You know, you can conquer it just like Meredith has. Yeah. And I think, I think a lot of it also has to just do with Sometimes the words that we use, maybe mm -hmm. in our head or even when we're looking up stuff, you know, um, sometimes it's all about just thinking about things in a, in a different way and being open to the possibility that there's more than one way to define time management. There's more than one way to define success. Someone else's success path is not necessarily your success path. You can follow the same general steps, but you have to be you the whole way through. Otherwise it's not right. your journey. And that, that goes for everything, the little baby steps all the way up to the big giant, giant steps. Exactly. And tell us about your other CRP win. So this was this 41 page document that you did. <laughs> okay. So um, there is another educational program that I'm in right now that is tailored specifically to people who want to launch WordPress web design businesses. And that's me. That's that's one of my things that I do as part of information project management. I design websites and I love WordPress. So there are all these documents that are part of the program that are like, hey, you should put this together and you're going to give this to your client. And this will mean less work for you later because they're not going to be asking you all these questions about what's this, what's that, what's the other thing, you know? And so I was working on customizing this document for essentially my first official client in in like this industry kind of like I had done web pages kind of off and on for other people but it wasn't really official this is like my first official client but it's also a friend so I'm kind of, kind of considering it like a beta tester and I still was like you know what I'm going to treat this like it's the real deal like this is like an really expensive client and they're just taking a chance on me. And so I had this, it's essentially an entire document about the anatomy of a website. And it's, you know, if you know, like anatomy books for human bodies, imagine something like that for a website, it's just more techie. So yeah, yeah. Um, it took me a while. I was going through it and I was making sure that it was up to date, that it was in my voice, that it represented my brand, that it used images so that people could understand what I was talking about. And it, I think it took me a really long time. I also procrastinated on it because it was so big, but every little bit that I chipped away at it, it got less and less overwhelming until it was done. And yeah. from there, it I remember just your post, you were so excited. <laughs> 
but the crazy thing is from there it snowballed and then like over the next week after I finished that one I did three more documents including one that was almost as long and it didn't take me three weeks to do it it only took me a few days and so it's like just that excitement of all right I got this one thing done I shared it with everyone everyone was like wow that's so cool yay and it was just like all right I gotta keep going I got more I got more and I just I I, I kind of was just getting it all done and it felt really good to just cross that off my list early on yeah. and be like, okay, now I can go into the remainder of this program, not having to worry about customizing this or, you know, setting up some workflow it just felt really good. Yeah. And I bet you used the, all those, we were just talking about those time management principles too, to now help you get these like big what would seem overwhelming projects done, but now you can break them down using that, those time management tips from, from the membership too. I love that. Yep. Yep. Definitely. So what do you think, um, what, what would your best piece of advice be for someone who's just considering, maybe they're like you, they have a lot of different passions, a lot of things they want to do. Uh, what, what would be your advice to them? I I would say that you have to pay attention to that thing that really gets you excited. For me, it's the thing that I would do and I glance at the clock and I'm like, whoa, when did it become three o'clock in the morning? You know, whatever that is for you, the thing that you would stay up late for, the thing that you find yourself constantly either Googling or, you know, you, you have 8 million podcast subscribe on your feed about this thing, or all of your Pinterest boards have this kind of stuff on it, you know, whatever it is that you just keep going back to, that's got to be the thing that you go for. That's got to be the thing that you make yours in one way or another. And if you do that, it'll it, honestly, I know that's like kind of a, a trite catchphrase or whatever, but if you find something that you love, you won't feel like it's work. To a degree, every day will feel like, all right, this is just something cool that I've got to tackle. So as long as you're pursuing something that really excites you, you'll you'll never stop. And and you'll not want to stop, you know, and you'll feel really good about it. I love this because this is what I say all the time, but you're like living proof of this. So <laughs> I love that you're you're saying it and it's it's happened for you too. Like you get excited, you can tell the passion that you have. Yeah. I mean, and it, it took me a long time to get here because I was convinced that I had to be working for someone else in order to be successful or in order to, you know, support my family or, or make a contribution or anything like that. And instead, I have learned that I can actually do a lot more on my own for a bunch of other people than I can working within someone else's confines. Now, I still love libraries like a lot, but having my own business means right now, other people have been like, I'm struggling. My business isn't, you know, working right now. I need to get a loan, da, 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 da. I haven't had that problem. And I am so, so blessed to be able to say that. Like, it makes me not only really happy that I've set myself up in this way, but it makes me that much more motivated to help the people that haven't been able to get that kind of foothold in place. Um, And not everybody can, not everybody will. Someone else's passion is going to be to run a business that has to be open, that has to, you know, have a, a location or something like that. But I still think that everyone ultimately is going to come out of this learned that what they want most is stability somehow and it's up to us to decide you know where's that going to come from is it going to come from us or is it going to be dependent on someone else and for me I'm still going to go to libraries I'm still going to work at libraries whenever I can but my business is my foundation definitely yeah and you can use all those experiences that you have and bring them all into your business to create that unique business for you which I love that you've done so where can people find you online um, I am at indigoinc.solutions. That's a really fun domain that most people haven't ever heard of, dot solutions, because that's what I offer. I offer solutions. solutions. Yeah. Um, and I have a Facebook page and, and things like that. So, yeah. Awesome. 
Well, it was so fun chatting with you, Meredith, because you're yeah. always, it's always so fun to learn, learn more about you and learn more about your background and, and what you're working on. So, um, but yeah. yeah, we might have to get you to do a, a member share, uh, about a class member share about your time management. Yeah, system. I was just thinking, you know, I kind of want to do something, but what do I want to do it on? Well, maybe that. Maybe that. Yeah. Oh, and by yeah. the way, um, you got hellos from Audrey says hello. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, I think maybe this was Beverly. Someone said hello to you. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Audrey said hello to you. And then um, we got uh, Joel says hello. Uh, Sherry is here. I know she is one of our members. Sarah is here. Good to see you too. Hello. Um, and everyone, and I know Beverly was in here too. Um, Carrie is here and Dee is here. All the people. I know you recognize them. So that's why I wanted oh, to yeah. show you. <laughs> Yeah, no, Everyone. and I just shout out to my accountability group because that is, I honestly think, one of the best parts of CRP and class and all of that because, you know, you think that you can find people in any given Facebook group or whatever, but to be able to find people that you can trust and confidently talk to and be open with your struggles, that's hard. And I love the fact that I am able to talk to these ladies and we can, we commiserate every week and it just that. feels really good. And I, I am motivated because of them to stay on top of my goals and I am equally motivated to help them whenever I possibly can. And I'm really looking forward to the day when we can get, actually get together in person again, because yes. I would love that so much. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Well, those are our goal. That's our vision for, for the future. For we the will future. set that vision. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Meredith. Thank yes. You. Thank you. Hey there, it's Anna Runyon, and I would like to invite you to my upcoming free masterclass called How to Plan, Design, and Launch Your Dream Career or Business Without Wasting Time or Money. I'm going to go over three simple strategies to go from feeling stuck at work to waking up excited every single Monday. So you can save your seat at www.classycareergirl.com forward slash masterclass.